Hello everybody, it's Alan Berry Labucan here from the Alan Berry Reports. Um, got an exciting show for you today. We're going to talk about some of the trends that I'm seeing. Um, one of those trends is that uh, we're getting a lot more news uh, of, of late uh, from the junior exploration space. I think that's the most crucial part of the business, so I'm excited to see that happen. Uh, we've got a good batch of companies, uh, six or seven companies to talk about today. So let's get started with some of the uh, charts that I'm looking at. One of the ones that I'm looking at these days is this. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, very similar chart to the S&P 500. You see the big dip after the uh, worries about uh, COVID, uh, the, the virus and various and economic problems that uh, saw a pretty steep correction. And now the market is uh, aggressively taking back a lot of those, um, uh, those gains or those losses. And I really think that this is a danger zone that we're in right now. The latest thing that got everybody excited was uh, uh, one of the uh, the economic or the employment report. I think that will be the most uh, significantly uh, revised number that I've seen in a long time. Almost every economist got it wrong. Um, I'm not much of a fan of economists, but uh, they do a lot of good homework uh, on the big markets for sure. And to see them that off, I mean, they were looking for a significant drop in unemployment from the 40 million that uh, are already unemployed due to the COVID crisis. And, uh, and that it came, instead came up with 2 million to the good. Uh, I don't see where that's coming from. That looks like a lot of political chicanery to me. Politics playing with the economic numbers. Uh, it, it, all, it happens quite often. Uh, to this degree, I'm not sure that I've seen anything like that to this degree uh, in a long time. So I firmly believe that you're going to see a big revision to that number. And I, I think that right now this the, the overall market is grossly overvalued. Uh, I think the next correction could uh, test those lows of uh, March and uh, create some new lows. So I'm, um, I'm avoiding like the plague big cap stocks. While that happened, uh, we had another pullback in the price of gold. Lately, it's sort of been trending sideways since about April. Um, I think that the we're, we're seeing action like we did last year where we had some sideways action going into June and then things really firmed up for, what, 10, 11 months. I think we're coming into another kind of uh, action like that where we see it from the bottom left to the top right. This sideways action is a little bit of absorption of that big move up to these, uh, these highs. But uh, yeah, I think gold is ready to go a lot higher. One of the things that uh, arguments I've made of relate uh, since about here was that uh, the US dollar is uh, overcooked and it's been coming down pretty aggressively. Uh, I think it's got a lot more to go on the downside. I just see too many, um, well, there's a perfect storm for the price of gold to go up, including uh, you know this overcooked U.S. dollar that broke the down down downtrend line, and uh, that could take it down to the 990 point. That's the index, and uh, which will be very good for the price of gold. So let's get started with uh, my favorite part of the show, which is stock picking. Um, today. Sorry for the little delay there. I had to water my throat. Uh, today I've got six or seven companies. We're going to start with Precipitate Gold Corp. Precipitate is down in the Dominican Republic. And they announced that they increased their Copi Hill Epithermal Gold Zone at the Pontin Project. These guys are very aggressive and uh, in, in, they've been one of the key companies that are down in the Dominican Republic. Uh, looking for the next Pueblo Viejo, uh, which is what um, uh, what uh, the big mine down there for Barrick. It's uh, it's a, a very profitable mine. 
Um, and these guys are looking for another one. With this news they announced, they put out a, uh, a map of the uh, gold, silver, arsenic, mercury, antimony, and thallium um, to sort of, they seem to be overlapping pretty good in this central zone area. Um, there is a little bit of a hit up here in gold and silver that looks interesting. Um, it looks like this is a, a, a nice sized anomaly. Um, again, it's in a, a good area. The major trap attributes are they've had some uh, surface sampling with rock values up to 4.1 grams per ton gold. Um, and uh, they can feel it's a pronounced epithermal gold system. So these tend to have, they can have several uh, vein veins in the overall system. And They've got some outcrops that look pretty interesting. So now they've got to start drilling into it, find out where they are in the system, where they could look for the boiling zone of the epithermal gold system. Uh, I like the various projects and their focus on this, uh, this, area, this um, um, Dominican Republic, looking for another big deposit out there. Let's take a look at the chart quickly. Uh, the chart has been going sideways since about mm, late April. Um, it looks like it's ready to have a bit of a golden cross here, uh, which is very encouraging um, between the 50 and the 200 day moving average. They have 105 million shares out, so not too much stock out, and they've got a good following. So if, uh, if they get anything juicy in their drilling, I think you'll see a breakout to the upside. I like the chances of a breakout to the upside, so this is a good one for you to put on your shopping list. The next company I'm going to talk about is Golden Goliath. Golden Goliath is, uh, there's been a, here's the Red Lake map. Golden Goliath is down here uh, in the south of Great Bears Dixie Project. This has caused a lot of enthusiasm. The Dixie Project, I think, is valued at somewhere like four or five hundred million dollars right now uh, and uh, BTU is one of the picks in the reports uh, they've got some interesting stuff as a possible extension of the uh, of what the Great Bear has found plus they will have over here some VMS potential and now down here you've got this Golden Goliath which has the same kind the same plumbing system that created all these big mines up in the Red Lake area, the, 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 the Great Bears stuff is also on this Golden Goliath ground. And it's been sort of touched before and some have sort of dismissed it. Um, it hasn't been done enough work. And uh, now that they've got their, they're working on a private placement, they're mobilizing their crew to get out there and do work. I, uh, I think that this is one you want to keep an eye on. It's, as you see, it's a sleepy little stock, but uh, uh, recently gone through a, uh, a, a golden cross that looks pretty interesting. And I think that that's, you know, interesting, especially when it's coincident with uh, a work program starting. Um, so keep an eye on this one. It has 170 million shares out. So... At six, seven cents, you're looking at a sub two, ten million dollar valuation. Looks very interesting to me. Uh, the next company is Vizla, Vizla uh, Resources. This is the news that uh, from uh, recently, May 27th, they did a four million dollar bot deal financing. Um, and what they're focusing on is their Panuka project. It's a project they have an option to acquire 100 percent of. It's not a cheap deal, but the reason that it's not cheap is they've kind of grabbed a whole entire uh, district with a mill attached to it, a 500 ton per day mill. Um, they have uh, a series of veins. Uh, it's a, a plus 35 kilometers of underground wor workings. They've got a tailings facility, roads, power, and permits. So. It's a, uh, it's a rich deal, but it's a rich deal for a reason. And some of that reason is, if you look at some of their uh, re recent results uh, from last year, they hit some really good numbers. 
and uh, I like this uh, this story. I especially like it because it has a big following that last late last year and early this year drove the stock up to 95 cents. It's on half price sale since all these newsletter writers were pounding the table on it. I like looking at them. I started picking up coverage down here and you know, the, since then, they've had a, a, a good upward bias on their stock with higher highs and higher lows. I like to see that kind of action. I think they're, they're looking, the way this 50-day this, uh, moving average is trading, I think that they're looking at a golden cross here per, pretty soon. And it's trading on the 50-day. So it's a good, good entry point for this stock if they're successful. I think it uh, could be driven up to a lot higher valuations where they would likely do the financing to uh, cover the 100% ownership cost of this project. And um, they could very quickly turn into a producer. Uh, so they've got exploration potential, they've got production potential, they've got permits, they've got the mill, they've got a lot going for them. Uh, they only have 59 million shares out, so it's a nice tight deal. And uh, again, it's trading at about half off of its 52-week uh, low uh, or 52-week high. I always like those kind of trends, and especially when you've got this 50-day starting to turn up here uh, on good volume. I think a breakout to the upside is imminent with this one. And so uh, I tell you, it's time to take a look at Vizla and adding it to your portfolio. The next one is Contact Gold. Uh, Contact Gold put out a news release on the 2nd of June uh, last week and what caught my attention is that they're looking for an oxide deposit, so an open pit uh, heap leachable oxide deposit, but the grades that they're getting are quite significantly better than a lot of the, the this is in the uh, surface sample uh, and um, they're um, they're getting five grams over 39 meters, two grams over 70 meters, 3.5 grams over 38 meters. Sorry, those are past drilling results. And this project is in uh, Nevada. I love Nevada project because if they have success, uh, the companies get a uh, what I call the Nevada premium. They always seem to trade at a much more uh, significant uh, valuation than uh, than similar projects in other jurisdictions and uh, so yeah it's a, a really good project um, here's the map you can see some of the sampling uh, past uh, there's this the blue dots are the proposed drilling you can see that they had some good hits of gold around there this is where they had the past production they're they're looking to extend this uh, the, this area down here around the Zulu target. Here's a historical pit. Um, so it's a, a very interesting project. Now let's look at the chart. This is a classic sort of cup and handle formation. I think the handle is about to get set somewhere in this 70 to 75 cent range. Then you might see a little bit of sideways action and then a blast off to higher uh, than their yearly lows. I, I really like, these are very bullish charts to me. Uh, and uh, I like what I see in Contact Gold. Uh, contact is one you want to uh, get doing your homework on uh, and try to look for spots along the right side of this, uh, right side of the cup formation, or uh, you might even wait until you see the handle forming and then look for a little, often they'll have a little dip after the handle and then they take off. So. That's one I, I think you should take a look at. And uh, they have 95 million shares out. And uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting project with, uh, in Nevada looking for an oxide open pit type target. The next company is Genesis Metals. They have the symbol of GIS. Uh, they trade on the venture. They had uh, news out, drill highlights. And for some reason, this was on June the 2nd, for some reason the market decided to sell off on this news. Whereas I thought it was pretty good. They had a, almost 9 grams of one, at 1 meter, about 223 meters down hole. They had some more 3.99 grams of over 3 meters, 
10 grams over 1.15 meters. They're off to a really interesting start on this project and are, these are good results off this recent results, a recent drilling. And I'm, I'm looking for more of uh, that kind of stuff off this company. The, the project is in Quebec, one of the best jurisdictions in the world. It's in an area, Abitibi Greenstone Belt, where lots of big mines have been found. And uh, I like these, uh, these numbers that they're kicking out here um, in there uh, from really close to surface, 89 meters, 230 meters. They're getting some nice high grades in there. Uh, so they need to understand the system a bit more, but um, these shoots uh, uh, that they're hitting are very interesting and I like what I see there. The, uh, this, here's the stock chart. It's been sort of, as I said, it got hit here after this news came out. Actually, it did trade it a little bit before the news, so there might have been some feelings that, you know, this would be negative news, but I don't find it as negative news. Uh, so I think that this is a, a good uh, entry point here. Uh, Genesis has 43 million shares out, so it's a very nice, tight little deal. And um, I, yeah, I like the project. I like the, uh, the, the, the results. I like the work they're doing. I even like the symbol GIS that stands for geological information system so these guys are probably rock nerds and I like rock nerds that do good work don't have heavily diluted stock and uh, and uh, uh, have catalysts to see the valuation move up uh, speaking of uh, low uh, amount of stock out uh, my company advanced gold had news out on June the 1st uh, what we announced is that we gave an update on our plans for, well, we gave an update on the work that's been completed and the plans for the uh, next drilling. And basically what it comes down to is this is the crucial map you want to take a look at. What you're seeing here is a chargeability, I, from an IP survey, it's the char chargeability true depth section. And this represents about a, from end to end, about a 3,500 meter continuous chargeability anomaly. Um, the, we drilled three holes into it and this is really where you would look for the guts of the system but over here is where we had it coming closest to surface. So we could get at it with the, 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 the easiest and we wanted to understand how good this uh, IP survey was. Now this is about a 3,000 meter step out from where we, around where we had done drilling in the past. We, this would be, and these were the first three holes into this chargeability anomaly. When you're drilling down here at the extension, you're not really looking for the area where there's grade. You're more looking for confirmation of the system. And that's what we got in spades, uh, was a confirmation of this system. And, um, and now we're going back, uh, we're going to do probably about a 3,000 meter step out to the north. And at the north here is where I think we're looking for the plumbing system of this entire system. If you see here, this zone, uh, this is what you call a hinge zone. And then it drops down to below the, uh, the, the, the um, detection li limits of the uh, IP survey. But there's a couple interesting things here at the hinge zone. One, it opens up and gets larger. And two, uh, it continues beyond the limits of the, the system. So this is a classic sort of area where you would look for the plumbing system of the zone. Now, to, to bring this into better context, the plumbing system, think of it like a pump of, a, of, a, uh, of water, okay? So it's pumping hot water up through here. And when it, gets all, when it can pump all the way out to, you know, 3,500 meters from the hinge, so to say the sort of the center of the hinge zone, that's indicative of a high-powered system. The fact that we had layered uh, lenses of disseminated sulfides and even in those disseminated sulfides, we were getting inter interesting to, to even high grades of base metals. This is a very exciting situation to go back here now and chase after this, um, 
this plumbing system. And uh, so the next holes we're looking at going is down through here and, um, and uh, uh, to cut through this um, IP chargeability, we probably want to catch a, take a couple different directions, start testing this high, the depth of it as well. And uh, so we've got, we're, we're, we, we had two news releases out, one to raise some money to cover the next drilling. And one, I really wanted people to understand this overall large IP chargeability anomaly. I mean, I, I look around, you, people that watch my reports know I'm looking around all the time for good projects. And I just don't come along across a lot of uh, juniors with big IP chargeability anomalies, continuous ones of 3,500 meters. And especially ones that have drill holes in it that have confirmed that this system is a very high quality system, exciting system, and one we're gonna, we mean to start drilling into the guts of it down here at the, the hinge zone, get through the hinge, and, uh, and also start drilling to depth. Um, these IP, these uh, sulfide systems can be very large, 100 million tons plus. We know there's a 100 million ton plus, uh, around a 100 million ton one, 12 miles down the road. And there's, and that's another thing about sulfide systems. They're generally found in clusters. And so far, there's only that one in the cluster. Looks like we have the chance of having another one. And we've got some exciting drilling ahead of us. Uh, here's the chart. Um, we've been, we had a high back here of about 24 cents on the yearly high came down uh, to the end of April there. We were trading at under six cents. Since then, it's been firming up, higher lows, higher highs. And uh, you can see that in the 50-day uh, moving average. And I think it's looking like we could have uh, the makings of a golden cross uh, happening here soon, uh, which is very bullish. So AAX, I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, so, you know, take, a, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but do your homework. And I think you'll see that the science of what we're doing is why I'm so excited about this project. So in closing, let's go back to that gold chart. I, I really believe that we have the making of, well, we have a perfect storm for gold to head much higher. We've got central bankers fighting to drive their currencies down. We've got uh, central bankers that, uh, you know, can't, uh, they're printing money like it's going out of style. Debt's going through the roof. The U.S. is well over $20 trillion in debt now. They can't really ever raise interest rates in any kind of serious way. Um, and uh, the, the biggest thing, though, is on the supply and demand side of things, we have a supply that's really weakened. Uh, you've got years now of uh, the a trend of the, uh, the head grades at mines going down. And for new discovery grades, the average grade is going down dramatically. Um, I never thought I'd see the day when, you know, most of the discoveries now are less than a gram. Um, and uh, so they're replacing with the, the ones they're mining out with, they're not replacing them enough, and what they're replacing them with is with low-grade project. Uh, that's not a very good scenario. So exploration is really the key uh, part of the sector. That's what I follow the most. I think we need a lot more discoveries and a lot more companies doing good exploration. Uh, one of the things that I sort of, one of my litmus is, is are they, uh, uh, you know, trying to determine are they a stock pump uh, lifestyle kind of company and the lifestyle kind of companies have lots of stock out they don't do much drilling and they pay their people a lot of money uh, if those are the kind that uh, you see you want to avoid those the, the the ones that I look for are ones with tighter stock structures that do a lot of work uh, have a lot of insider ownership and uh, and um, they've got um, uh, good projects that they do a lot of work on and they don't pay high wages. And uh, if you want an example of that, my company, AAX, uh, we pay, uh, I don't get paid a, a whole lot compared to my peers. 
and uh, I own a bunch of the stock. The chairman of the board owns close to 20%. I own close to 10% on a fully diluted basis. We've got two or three other shareholders out there that are in the 10, 5 to 10% range. Um, so we've got a very tight stock, less than 40, around 40 million shares out. Uh, and so, you know, these are the kind of, I'm building the company that way because they're the kind of company that I think you, the investors, should be looking at. And uh, on, so take a look. I think there's going to be a lot of money made in this perfect storm for gold, silver. I think copper's uh, got a good future and some other stuff. So do your homework. You can find a lot of the uh, stuff on the, the junior mining weeklies that I've been doing. This one has a good group of companies for you to look at. On that note, remember the shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions. On that note, I will wish you all a great day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.